If you're using Git in any sort of professional environment, it's likely that you're going to want to manage your releases in quite a controlled manner. To help with this, Git provides a tagging system, which allows us to actually assign tags to specific commits or merges, which can then enable us to keep track of what happened at specific points in time. In this project I've gone ahead and created a couple of files. So in the master branch which we're in now, you can see that we have the license file, a readme file and a to-do file. I've also gone ahead and created a second branch called feature one. Which includes an index.html file and a style sheet within a CSS folder. All of these files are empty, just to make things easy for ourselves, except for the readme file, which just says that this is a readme. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a tag to the feature one branch before we actually merge it into the master branch. And this way we will be able to see exactly what's happening in our project a lot more easily. So the most common type of tagging that you will encounter is the annotated tag, which is performed by git tag minus a. When you use the annotated tag version, you're also going to be asked to provide a message, which will be a description of what's happening, similar to a commit message or a merge message. So you may want to say something like this, this version one and creates a basic structure to work from. You're then going to need to provide a name for this. So this is going to be version 1.0. If you add in a minus s command, this will also sign the tag with your user details. Unfortunately I don't have the software installed to be able to demonstrate this though and so for now we will need to remove the minus s tag. To see a list of all of the tags we simply need to type get tag which will show us that we have a version 1.0 available to us. This more closely resembles a bookmark in a book rather than a commit message, for example. And as we said earlier on, it's typically used to help manage what's happening at each specific point in a project. So if we change to the master branch and merge in, feature one, we're also going to inherit the tag which we applied to the feature one branch, although now we have it in our master branch. As is demonstrated by if we type git tag again. If we push our branch up to the GitHub server, instead of using the master branch, we need to specify the tag that we've added. So in this case we're going to type git push for origin v1.0. This is going to push the branch as well as the tag itself. And if we come across to the GitHub web page and reload, we can see that we now have one release, which is specified as version 1.0, as well as the message that we added. We can of course add many more tags, this is just the only one that we've created. But we could of course, once we've added the tags as release notes, which will allow us to actually share our code a lot more easily. So we can provide links directly to version 1.0, as you can see in the bottom left. So if you look in the bottom left, this file is called version 1.0 which allows us to make our code a lot more portable and to work on different versions and actually maintain different versions from the same repository. 
In the next video we're going to talk about stashing and cleaning our repository, which will allow us to maintain what we're doing in a lot more meaningful and useful manner. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that.